So then we <laughs> then we move on to the to the second talk by Stefan. Thank you. When to prefer other catheter-based FMR well, technology over mitral? This is also a little bit. Um, kind of a dis start of the discussion that we later will have and reminding everybody what kind of goals we have when we are treating functional MR. And one of the interesting goals we actually have, but sometimes forget, we want to induce a favorable uh, LV remodeling. Yes, we want to pro stop the uh, progression of heart failure. We want to reduce events in the end. But the key mechanistic thing we want to use is really reduce the uh, LV remodeling in a way so that's beneficial. I would like to remind we have many such patients it is a disease of the aging. So if your trial doesn't have a mean age of 70 or higher, uh, you have a problem. And grades of functional MR are important, but it's not only the sickest patients, but also the mild to moderate patients we should uh, consider. As I said, we want to target this as one of the many comorbidities we have in heart failure. And sometimes the world of mitral uh, functional MR seems to be a, a mono-device world nowadays in, in, kind of in the world of congresses and everything. But quite a number of devices were developed. And we basically would like to say there are some limitations with what is currently going on. Yes, you need fairly large catheters. You have a transeptal puncture. And by the way, maybe that's even part of the benefit. I, I accept that. Uh, well, basically, when you're using a mitral clip, you limit some of the future therapeutic options. And if you take mitral FR and co-op the way I suggest, you might say that the evidence is actually inconsistent. Uh, it is inconsistent to the degree that basically you have two different results. If you just believe me, then we all agree on 25% benefit. If you don't believe me, you need to do additional studies. I would also suggest that 70-80% there's overlap in the inclusion-exclusion criteria of these two studies. And interestingly, and uh, this was Bernard already said this, the one-year control group mortality was identical in both groups. And to me, that's the most unbiased estimate of the severity of this population. They were similarly severe, and yes, in some details, differently, but still similarly uh, kind of uh, diseased. So I think we should also consider other options. Now, when you want to treat functional MR, you can treat the leaflet, the annulus, the ventricle, and you can see here you have different approaches, and maybe they also have some validity. We have a number of therapeutic developments in heart failure, and all of this means it's all done on the background of medical therapy as well, and actually also on the background of other devices being investigated. And blinding, I would like to repeat, particularly for symptomatic improvement, is a key thing and safety can be assessed uh, in an unblinded uh, way, also uh, in, a, in a valid way. But really, the more you think about symptoms and quality of life, the more you be blinding. You might say devices are difficult to blind. Well, some of the devices actually do use blinding. So this is possible and should not just be dismissed automatically as being impossible. You will get better quality estimates of benefit, particularly for symptoms, quality of life, for sure. Well, yes, there is less bias, less, but not no bias uh, when you're using events. If you know which treatment the patient is on, you may want to decide uh, on some things being done differently, and you may or may not know that actually in uh, the co-op trial, after the implantation of the device, um, there were tune-up kind of hospitalizations which were not counted towards uh, the primary endpoint. So I don't know how many there were. I'm told there are few, but I don't think this is published. Maybe somebody can correct me on this uh, in the discussion. There is an alternative option with a randomized controlled trial, and Horst will actually, I believe, uh, show also some data of this. this. There is an alternative available that uses a fairly small catheter, is a one-hour procedure, doesn't necessarily need a, a TE, so maybe the, your somewhat less experienced people can start this much quicker with a shorter learning curve, uh, and maybe you have also still some options to treat patients later. But I would like to remind us in the end only of one thing, and that was the primary goal of the treatment, to induce a favorable remodeling. And when you look into the co-op study, the mitral clip group was better than the control group, but again, because the control group got bigger. But the, the change in the mitral clip group was small. If you take the three and four plus kind of patients with the carrier system, you actually did induce this based here on the mean numbers. 
Uh, for MITREF R, we only have median numbers. These are the median numbers for Corellian system in from reduced FMR, and these are the data from MITREF R in this regard. So maybe actually for some of the goals, if you have that goal, uh, there's other therapies that are uh, beneficial. I would say at least that the co-op system, in the, in the words of Greg Stone, is, is a representative for maybe less than 10% of the functional MR patients. There's another 90% there's maybe a time to really consider additional options. Thank you so much.